You're listening to Parasearch UK Radio. News, views and reviews from the world and the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. It's Monday evening and you're listening to Joe and Gemma on the Supernatural Show. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Supernatural Show. You've just got me tonight. Joe's abandoned ship. She's out for a meal with her beloved Mark, who is back from under the sea. So it is just I tonight. But what a show we've got for you tonight. So with no further ado, let me just introduce you to the wonderful Dave Harazny. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good. So busy weekend for you, my love. Oh yeah, two nights. God, it's the first time we've ever done it. Two nights uh, investigation. Have Public you call. never done two nights in a row before? No, no. This is the first time we've ever done it. Okay, so uh, so how did you find it? Exhausting. I'm still recovering. <laughs> You'll it's be very recovering exhausting. the next week. You'll just start coming around by Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is hard and it is tiring though, isn't it? It, it gets you. It gets your legs more than anything because you, you're constantly standing around sometimes, and you know you're walking about. So uh, yeah, you don't get a chance to sit down. There's not many no. breaks. So. And the the packing and unpacking of kit, running yeah, around, we, setting yeah, up, shutting yeah. down. Yeah, because we couldn't leave it left up because they had paints and decorators in as well it's over the weekend. So. Oh, that's even worse. It is It is so much hard work. I really do sympathise with you. Being there, done that, and it, it does start to take effect after a while. So, Dave, do you want to tell everybody where we where we was? We were at uh, Stanley Palace at Chester, which is in the northwest of England. Oh, was it Palace, not Place? Yes. <gasps> no. I really do apologise. I've been telling everybody the wrong name. I am so sorry. But you know what I'm like, Dave? I do like to change names and places. And <laughs> <laughs> you like changing names. Yeah, you like change mine as well. Yeah, it keeps things interesting. So it's Palace, Stanley yeah. Palace. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, do you know much about the history of that place, Dave? I know some of the history, but I don't want to give too much away because if we go back, it, then if, the, if my two mediums are listening at the moment, Andy Jones and Nick Humphreys, then I'm giving them information to reel off. But I have, yeah, I was glad that Saturday night it came up with uh, one of the owners, one of the original owners, which I've been after him to get for a long while from our first investigation we did there. And he actually came up with it Saturday night and it was phenomenal. Yeah, I really, yeah, because I didn't, I didn't tell him, I've never told him anything about who owned it. He got, on the first invest, investigation we did there, he got the first name, but couldn't get the surname. But on Saturday night, he actually got the surname because the actual spirit of the person came through. And uh, he got both the surname and his first name. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't there Saturday, was I? So I no, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a good night Saturday night. A lot more spirit activity. A lot more devices were going off. And the public that came, some came for two nights. Some came and paid again because they wanted to come back on the Saturday night to... Yeah. Uh, come to the investigation with us and um, we got quite a lot and got the tip got all the public work in Saturday night night it was a, a really good night like I said exhausting but it was a good night see this is it you get out what you put in and it sounds like Saturday night was the night to be there so should we start on Friday yeah so I got there early yeah just to see you all I am so sorry if everybody can hear my dog's trying to get into my room <laughs> So annoying. I'm really sorry, everyone. Yeah, so Friday night, got there early so I could see you guys, um, have a bit of a catch up, because obviously I don't see you very often. No. Um, so that that was really nice. So And then we split off into two groups. Yeah. Um, I was with the lovely Gary Fields. 
and you was with Nick. Yeah, I was with Nick, yeah. And right. obviously members of the public because yep. it was a public investigation. So what activity did you get on the Friday night? Friday Friday night with Nick, that was interesting as well because we started off in the room uh, just adjacent to the door, which was a smaller room at the yeah. back of the palace. And uh, we tried the Ouija board on the table, but nothing was co- nothing would contact, nothing would come through. But Nick was picking up two male spirits walking around the table and you could feel the actual air changing. It was going cold, colder as if, as if they were walking through us. Because a couple of people said, oh, I can feel a cold a cold spot. And I've just felt a cold spot. Uh, and nothing would come to it. Nick said that he could see the spirits peering over the table, but they just wouldn't entertain us with the, with the Ouija board at all, whether we used the glass or anything else like that. We tried two different Ouija boards and a planchette as well, and it just, it just wouldn't communicate with us. Uh, he did pick up the lady in black, which is in that room, and he also picked up a child, a little boy that was in the room as well, and he kept uh, sent, knocking off the K2. The K2 kept going off. It was going up to Orange when we asked it to, and it, it, it didn't do anything when we didn't ask the spirit to do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great thing about what we picked up in that room as well is I was speaking to one of the trustees before we started. Uh, Ethan came to me now and he says, do you, want to listen, do you want to know where the other whispering wall is? Because there's three. He said, Nick already knows two, but he doesn't know the third. And as we were in that room, Nick just went over to near the fireplace, to the left side of the fireplace. He says, I'm just being drawn to this area here to listen. Was that in the same room that you was doing the Ouija board in? Yes, it was, yeah. And he just said, I've been drawn here. I keep being drawn here by by a man. He's asking me to listen. And that's when I clarified with him. I said, well, that's the third listening wall. That means it seems to be you put your head towards it and you can hear people talking upstairs. Right. Uh, so you can hear the full conversation of what's going on. Uh, we did try, the trustees tried to open it on a Saturday night and all that came out was a load of sand and gravel and everything, you know, masonry and that. So we didn't, he didn't open it fully. So in that point, you have to get the Uber out and Uber everything up before all the public got there. So, yeah, it was really interesting, that was. A really interesting room. And I said, yeah. nothing happened on the spirit board at all. On the yeah, Ouija. well, I can confirm that neither, because Gary and Nick are both mediums. Um, and because I was there and you was there, we can confirm that those two did not speak to each other. And no information was passed over from any group. No, no, it wasn't. Um, and... So Nick had picked up on the two men. We'll, we'll focus on the two men for the time being. Nick had, as you said, had, had, had been focusing on these two men. And then when I went in with Gary, um, now I'm not going to give too much away, or I'm going to try not to give too much away, because in all fairness, this is Gary's story to be telling, not mine. But yeah. I'm sure Gary won't mind me um, giving away bits of information um, so Gary also picked up on on these two men, and there was quite a story behind those two gents, um, right. and there was quite a bit of activity. Pretty much like you said, um, you could feel the the, the temperature changes, um, and then the equipment would be going off over one side where Gary was saying that he could see somebody, or he was picking up on a spirit, um, and then. The equipment over the other end, where the other chap was, was going off as well. So it was like the equipment was communicating with each other, if you will. But there was yeah. also a member of the public um, with us, and she was also very, very sensitive. And she was also picking up on the two men. And she was getting bits, and Gary as well was getting bits of the conversation of, of what was being said between those two men. I was absolutely blown away. Absolutely yeah, yeah. blown away. It was phenomenal. So then just to jump forward to the end of the night, um, we will go back to the rest of Friday night in a minute, yeah. but just to to wrap up the, this segment, if you will. Yes. Yeah. At the end of the night, um, Gary, Nick, myself, you was there, Dave. There was a few of us. There was the, the lady that was also a sensitive that was in the group with, with me and Gary. We was all discussing our findings in that one room. And the stories completely matched. 
yeah. completely. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. And then Gary got a picture out that had been drawn some years previous and Nick confirmed that that was a very, very, very close likeness, if not the same person as to yeah. what he was seeing in that room. So at that point, I was like, oh, speechless. Speechless is the only words that I will use for that one. And then... Um, I don't know whether to say this bit now or wait until we've, we've finished the rest of the night, but yeah. Gary opened his envelope. So shall we shall we continue with that bit now, Dave, or yeah, should we go, should go, we go save that it. until we've done the rest of Friday night? Yeah. So, I've gone so, for it go for it now. So Gary opened his envelope. He'd been getting messages all throughout the week, hadn't he, knowing yes. that he was going on Friday. So well, he, well, he actually, opened... actually, he gave me the envelope at the beginning of the night and said, keep this in your back pocket. Don't open it, he says, and open it at the end of the night when we're finished. So the envelope was sealed as well, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, it was, yeah. You should really put that out there for everybody. So so at the very beginning of the night, Gary had given you the envelope, um, said it's sealed. You can confirm it was sealed. At the end of the night, after we'd had the discussion about what activity we'd been getting, Gary opens his envelope. And I've got to be honest, he was 100% spot on on everything mm. that he had written down. Yeah, it is. It's, it really is. It really was. Uh, it, it's, it's astonishing how they get these things through, really. I'm, I'm oh. so envious of them, really, the way they can communicate with spirit. I, uh, I, I know, right? Say. Yeah, you see, I'm with you because... You see, Gary, Gary is in the chat room, everybody, and he's just put love the intelligence of spirits. And, and he's spot on, you know, because... Mm. If for him to be able to get all that information in the very beginning of the week before the event has even taken place, I, you know, yes, you can you can question it. There's lots of questions you can have about about the abilities of a medium, but when everything is spot on, I can't I can't find many questions to ask about that and any questions that I have had yeah. I've actually it's, taken it's, a direct it's, it's anyway, so. well. yeah it's sort of stunned as well because yeah it does yeah you open the envelope up and you read it now and Gary's going everyone's turning around all the public's turning around like, yeah he got that yeah he got that yeah he got that it's it's it, it's both mediums that night Nick and Gary were so hard with the public it's the they must I mean, both they were both out again the next night. Gary was out with an investigation team doing an investigation. Nick was back at Stanley Palace with me. So they both must be really shattered this week with uh, how much they've worked. Oh, I can imagine. I mean the the sheer fact though that, that both Gary and they'd not worked together before either, had they? No, no. This the first was time. the first time that they'd actually worked together. So to see two different types of mediums working together. But separately at the same time. Yeah. To, and to get the exact same things, mind blowing. And even down to, like I said, you know, that, 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 um, I can't remember the lady's name. Was it Heidi? Yeah, it was, yeah. So Heidi, that was with us, um, she was getting very similar things as well. So that to me was, was something that, I'd not seen before as a rule mm -hmm. because it's not very often you have two mediums together and well she said she she was empathic um yeah, yeah. But she she also had traits of of mediumistic skills yeah yeah so to see three people working because they all work so different as well yeah, they, they worked do. differently yeah. but it all came together yeah, it's brilliant because Gary's more tempo, isn't he? He's more. Of a oh, trance. you absolutely killed me uh, off. This was Dave's welcome speech, everybody. Yeah. So, so Dave introduced Gary <laughs> as the up tempo, <laughs> and then I think, I think, I think poor Nick. Nick is in the chat room, everybody. So I'm going to put this one out there publicly for you, Nick. Dave actually called Nick the slow one. <laughs> I actually didn't mean it like that. I meant, meant to say he's, he's the one that communicates more with spirit by talking to him and listening to him. So Nick stands there and he has a conversation with actually a conversation with the actual spirit that's standing in front of him. Uh, 
yeah, so Nick's, yeah, he, he's, he's absolutely fantastic. I can't knock Nick for what he does. He, the stuff he comes out with is absolutely brilliant. Oh, I just yeah. can't, you know, every so location Friday, we go to. Yeah, Friday was the first time that I've ever worked with Nick as well. I'd, I've spoken to Nick um, previously, but I've never actually worked with him. So so that was really nice for me as well to, to see how he works. Um, and Dave Shuttle as well. Dave's in the chat room. Where is it that Dave works for? Because I, I always get it wrong, Dave. That Dave, sounds like Dave, I'm talking to you twice, yeah, doesn't it? Dave, Dave, where does Dave, Dave work? Dave. As, as Nick says, my Dave. <laughs> he, he, uh, Dave has his own team called United by Spirits. That's it. With Tristan Mills. And Nick is also part of, part of that team as well. So they're a trio that has another team together. Uh, and then Nick's come as co-owner of Entering the Unknown, along with Andy Jones. So there's three of us now as co-owners of Entering the Unknown. Uh, two two mediums, like I said, and me, yeah. and the rest of the, the team. Uh, yeah, and D- Dave's like the quiet one. He'll, he'll sit. He'll just sit there and he'll, he'll take things in. And he's, you know, you don't half the time you don't know he's there. Dave, Dave, Dave's an observer, and I like that in a person. I like to observe. I like to see what's occurring and how people work, and and even like the amount of times I will go on an investigation with my notepad and my pen and be jotting stuff down as the night goes on. You know, so I get that. I get where Dave's coming from with that. It, it is good to stand back sometimes. But yeah, fascinating, amazing night. So, what else did you get Friday? Friday we went it was Gary that went upstairs first wasn't he, he went up in the, in the, top, the top of the building while we were working downstairs in that small room and then we went into the larger room that's at the front near the front of the building that's on the main road you get a bit of a contamination there from the traffic going past but it can't be helped but we did have the device going off again on top of the, on top of the uh, piano like we did when we first did our investigation there it was constantly flashing but the thing is with, the, with this device the temperature is flashing through 50, 54.5 to triple zero, and it kept flashing like that. And a couple of us comment, commented and said, we've never seen that happen before. It goes from 59.5 to, to zero, zero, zero. Yeah. And it was constantly doing that. So in the end, I changed the batteries just to see if it was the batteries. Uh, and... We did debunk that as it was the batteries because we've never seen that before. And as soon as we put some more batteries in, it was okay and it was working fine. But did all, all, all the devices uh, Friday and Saturday had brand new batteries before they started. Mm. Um, we noticed that a couple of the devices were draining pretty quickly on the Friday and the Saturday. This uh, is the uh, only problem that I have with... Um with equipment it can malfunction and if the batteries are draining it will malfunction and give false positives yeah that's right but you know credit to you guys because you're aware of the equipment how it works what it does and as you said you completely debunked something that you thought or people with you could have perceived as activity by changing the batteries yeah it's, just, yeah, it's the same with the K2s. You know, when you, you, you're you going live on Facebook and then someone stood next to you with the K2 and said, oh, it's going off, it's spirit. Well, it's not, because we have to tell them that it's not. It's down to the phones because we're going live on Facebook. You know, and, and they're, oh, we're on, okay, oh. You know, and then that, it deflates them for a minute and then they get back up and you think, oh, we're okay. okay. Uh, but, yeah, you've got to debunk that sort of stuff. And when you've got a puppet there, you've got to let them know what's, what's going on and why it's doing that. You know, it's no use saying, oh, yeah, it's a spirit. Yeah, you know, it, it's you're not there to lie to the public, and that's what we, we tell them from the start. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, the best way to be upfront, open and honest. Can't go wrong with that. So so what else happened Friday? Was, was there any more, or, or was that all that you got? It was, it was up and down. I mean, downstairs was pretty flat in that main room where we were. Not a lot happens in that front room. Uh, we've never found anything i think on both nights it was quite flat uh but upstairs we got a bit more we actually used the sls camera upstairs yeah uh, and it caught an actual figure on top of the piano uh and it 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 wasn't it was an adult it wasn't a child it was an adult and it seemed to be they don't keep still on when you're on the sls The, the, the figures don't seem to keep still 
They all seem to be moving. Um, but this one was interesting when uh, people were going in front of the piano and they were putting their hand out and it was touching them. It was actually touching their hands. Uh, and we tried that with two or three different people. Uh, and we, I also asked out if he could raise his right hand, which he did when I asked him that. Uh, and then he seemed to have a cane in his left hand and he seemed to be waving it in the air. Yeah. And I just said to him, your left hand with a cane in it, can you put it down? And he did. He actually put it down to his side. And then after a few a few minutes, a couple of minutes, he, he put it back up. And then I asked him to keep still. And for a split couple of seconds, he did. He stood still on top of the piano. Uh and that's what we got. It was absolutely fantastic. We actually went live with that. And a lot of people commented on how, how it was uh, interacting with me. And it, it was on our, our group page. So uh, apart from that, we did get uh, the REM pod, the handheld REM pod. That went off on top of the piano a couple of mm-hmm. times. And so did the EDI machine when Gary was on the stairs. Yeah. And well, the EDI was going crazy earlier yeah. in the night because, as you said, um, me, Gary and the, the, the team started off upstairs and um, Gary was doing transmediumship with a few of the guests upstairs. And as that was taking place, the the Mel meter and the EDI was going crazy. And I mean crazy. And then as soon as the transmediumship was finished it stopped yeah yeah and that was with no one upstairs at the time i mean i went up to check to see what's going on i did i did a bit of filming to, i was there to just get the evidence of the was this towards the end of the night when everybody was downstairs yes, it was yeah yeah because before you went upstairs it was going off and i went upstairs to check it right and i asked i just well i just simply said whoever is here can you please step away from the equipment and go downstairs go see the people that are down there and see what they're doing and it stopped, so I went downstairs, and then it was no more than six, seven minutes before yeah. you was then going upstairs because it was going off again, and it just yeah. would not shut up, would it? No, it was, it was and it, like I said, it, they had both had brand new batteries in them, so it couldn't be in the batteries that night. I know they drained when, when they left, you know, left on for quite a long time, but these were brand new batteries, and they, I did check uh, to make sure everything was... Uh, still fully charged and the, the batteries are still full and they weren't drained and yeah it was yeah it was a good night for, for every angle i think oh definitely uh, definitely i mean the guests definitely enjoyed it um i can i can say that on the friday because i was there yeah um i know i did i had a great night um so the saturday Obviously, you guys were back there on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I was absolutely shattered. <laughs> uh, I think Nick, I think Nick was Nick was was going to be the worst one because the amount of energy he must put in when he's commu- communicating with spirit, it must take a hell of a lot out of him. And we oh, were only definitely. Nick was only, I mean, Nick, was only one there Saturday. Nick is in the chat room, so Nick, can you just drop into the chat room and just give us a brief statement on how it felt from your perspective? Um, working the both nights and, and how tired, etc. it made you feel? Well, we, 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 we were supposed to have two mediums on Saturday night because Andy was supposed to have come, the other, the other medium that's in the team, but he couldn't make it. So it was down to Nick to take full charge of, I think it was about 18 people, 16 to 18 people. Uh, oh, going into that small room where we, where we started off, where, off where the Ouija board was. And again, the Saturday night, they wouldn't come through, but they were still there in the in the in the in that actual room. The two men, you know, walking still around on the seat. Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was it was more active. I think it was more active upstairs Saturday night than it was downstairs uh, because we had devices. We had Jonathan Webster that he he create he makes his own devices. He builds mm. and makes all his own devices. And he came along uh, as a guest and he brought all these different kinds of devices. And we put them upstairs, uh, one on the piano, one on the cupboard, across from the piano. And at the same time through the night, they were going off simultaneously. Um, we kept saying, 
came in going up again. And there was no one upstairs at all. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was a really active night, Saturday night. I think it was more active than the Friday. Really? Well, it yeah. would be, wouldn't it? Isn't that typical? I'm not there and it gets more active. Yeah, well, that, that's where we go. We got more uh, stick figures uh, Saturday as well. We got one downstairs in the front room, which was seen to, seemed to, Nick got all the, the public around in a circle. They're all over the hands to create a bit more energy. Yeah. Uh, to get the room more active. And there seemed to be a stick figure that was clinging to the ceiling and walking around on the ceiling and in front of Nick's face. It was just like hovering in front of Nick's face at one point. Uh, and we've had that twice now. Uh, the same sort of thing that clings to the ceiling and walks about like it's like it's sort of, sort of a spider thing. Half human, half spider sort of thing. And it's you know, more of a, a negative thing as well, I think. Really? And we had it at Penryn Old Hall. And we had it at the Lion Swan at Conkleton as well, in the cellar. And it was just constantly walking round. You know how you get these acrobats that are double jointed and they can walk on the legs yep. and the hands? It's, it's like that. And it seemed to come there as well. It seemed to be clinging on into that one room. But as I said, as we got upstairs, we got uh, a lot more work on the glass on the table, glass yeah. divination, and it was working with just the public. There was no no medium on there. Nick was Nick was there to start off with. To yeah. get him I was there to encourage him to get to get talking, and they came through with uh, Stanley. Uh, I think it's James James Stanley. Is it James Stanley that uh, was the owner of the building? Wow. And, uh, they were asking out if it, if he liked anyone or if he didn't like anyone. And there was one certain person he didn't like, and they said, "Is it one of the public?" And it came. It did. The glass didn't move. And then when they said, "Is it one of the the team?" The glass moved. So there I was calling out all the team's names, and it never moved. And then it got to Jonathan Webster, who was our guest on the night. And it's we said the guy said, "Do you not like Jonathan?" And the glass moved. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he said, "Why don't you like Jonathan? Is it because he's arrogant?" And the glass moved. So we didn't like Jonathan because he was a bit arrogant because he was tormenting him as well. Right. Um, okay. And I went downstairs and said, "Jonathan, he doesn't like you up there." <laughs> he said, "That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. I don't care." <laughs> yeah, don't so, like you, love. Don't like you. Oh yeah, he was. It was. It was a good night. Yeah, they were getting lots of things. We got got the lady through, which we believe was. Uh, uh, James Stanley's wife and she had three children uh, she, I think she lost one at the age of three to a disease can't remember what it was now uh, Nick can probably tell you if he's in the chat room uh, and Nick got well, all that um, I'm actually thinking that if Nick's available I might add him in for him to give his take from a medium yeah, point yeah. when we'll, we'll, think, uh, yeah. we'll waffle on a bit more and then add Nick in yeah yeah <laughs> You so, know me, I like to waffle. Like I said, we, we also got two stick figures to get upstairs, but this time there were two children, uh, both between the piano and the cupboard, the sideboard thing on the other opposite side of the wall. And they were there for quite a while. And they were interacting as well, which was their interaction actually. One was interacting with Dave, Dave Shaw. That's really? his leg, yeah. Uh, but Dave also felt a negative pres presence around him again. And he's had this one before, where he, yeah. last time we were there on an investigation, he almost got pulled down the stairs. And I, I had to take the camera off him pretty quick, as he was filming at the time. And, you, how uh, many times yeah. had you been to Stanley Place? Previous Palace. I'm doing it again. Palace. Been, been Stanley it's, Palace. Yeah, it, we've, we've been there before on a private investigation, uh, filming for our series, Grams and Prime. And then we've just done these, these two public events, but we are hoping to hold more there in the future. Uh, we're just in negotiations with the trustees now uh, to see what we can do. But just totally for everybody listening at home, that horrific noise that you can hear in the background is just Nick very quietly joining us. Isn't that right, Nick? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I like to make an entrance. <laughs> I thought I had problems last week with my dodgy mic, and then you come along this week making as much noise as humanly possible. Sorry. I, I do apologise, everybody. <laughs> you all right, Nick? Uh, you all right, Dave? 
<laughs> Go on, Dave. You were saying just before. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really now what I was saying. Yeah, I'm not sure. Now, it's interrupted me. <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> How many times you'd been to Stanley Palace yeah, that, that, the and in talks? Yeah, Saturday night, Saturday night was the third time. So hopefully we'll be going back uh, to do more public events in the future. As it is a lovely building, it's it's a, it's got a great the atmosphere. The building itself is gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely it's, gorgeous. And uh, it's a respectable building. You've got to respect the place as well. And you've got to respect the spirits that are there, whether they're good or negative. I mean, we did pick up one negative spirit and, you know, it's, it's, it's bound to happen. You're bound to get a ne- negative spirit. But I'd like to go back to Dave because Dave Shuttle uh, picked up, he was being harassed. I was saying he's been harassed by this negative spirit on Saturday night. Uh, but we got downstairs when we had a second break. And he pulled his sleeve up and he had three scratches on his left arm. Wow. On his, uh, his arm, the top of his arm. So I, I took some pictures of them. I've got to put them on, the, uh, on our group page yet. But he had three scratches on the top of his left arm, uh, which was interesting. And you've not put those on your Facebook page yet? No, not yet. Well, just, just so you're aware and everybody at home that is listening, I have put a link to Entering the Unknown in the chat room. So pop over and check check out the footage check out what the guys get up to so i just thought i'd jump in with that bit while we're at it yeah oh yeah we had some some great scrying on saturday night as well upstairs see that's why i've I've added nick in to this because of the scrying so i can get it from two two different perspectives i can get it from a medium's perspective and a paranormal investigator's perspective so do you just want to explain um about the scrying, who was doing what, when the scry, where the scrying was taking place, etc. Go on, Nick. Let you ask that. Answer that to you then, Nick. Yeah, we, no, we, no we, pressure. We, no pressure. Don't uh, get yeah, it wrong. We, we were doing scrying upstairs outside the office. There's a, a mirror that just hangs on the wall, anyway. And that uh, outside the office is literally like a, a very tiny little corridor, isn't it? It's yeah, it's really you can't fit probably more than five or six people there comfortably. Five um, or six people? Well, you know, standing like sardines. Yeah, I was just so, thinking. But I, I I think we would I got one part of the team on Saturday to do um some table tipping or glass divination uh in the upstairs hallway. Yeah. Um and I grabbed three of the other members of the public uh, to come with me, and we just stood there in front. You know, I, de- I demonstrated what scrying is, so they understood. Um, and, and I basically I just threw them in the deep end and said, "Right, you know, I'm going to I'm going to kind of help you along, tell you what to say, but basically you're going to get the, the spirit to move forward out of the mirror, um, yeah. and they're going to show an image of themselves over your face." And the results were frightening, um, but fantastically, fantastically brilliant. Now, so, I have seen a few pictures of this, um, and you did a few lives, didn't you, Dave, while while the scrying was taking place? Yeah, it's, it's uh, Stanley Pass is fantastic for for uh, connection. It, you you lose, keep losing connection. I think my phone was the only one that was properly working, and that was cutting up now and again. Yeah, showing did, off he was, everybody listening, because he was the only person in the building that could get a signal. That was on a Saturday, or on a Friday. I could get signal, but not on a Saturday. Really? Uh, yeah. It's really but weird. It, yeah, the, the scrying was, it's the first time I've ever, well, it's not the first time I've ever seen it, but it's the first time I got the experience of what was coming through. Because what you saw in the mirror is completely different from what you saw on the video. So yeah. what was you seeing in the mirror, Dave? The mirror, you were just seeing someone with a, with a torch in front of the face. Mm. Well, not under the chin, but and the normal person's face. But when you looked on the video, you could see it completely changing. It was really dark as well. The first video was really dark, and you could see that it, the, the lady's face had changed. And it had a wider nose, a square chin, a really angry-looking, sad face, uh, and like a dimple in his chin as well. And I turned to Nick and said, it looks, it looks more like a, a Japanese warrior from the olden days when they used to wear their masks. It was really haunting, that was. Yeah, it's. Yeah, so to me, it actually looked like um, an executioner with the executioner's mask. So, um, but yeah, you know, we, we that's the thing about scrying. We're all going to see something slightly different. But he's right, the face, the, the jawline. And I know this lady quite well, you know, um, 
the her lady first... that was crying. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's her, her second investigation that she's ever been on. She doesn't know what scrying is. Um, I just told her what you know what, what to do, uh, and her jawline just completely changed. Uh, her skin tone changed within the mirror as well. It was the, the nose, the cheeks, the eyes changed. It just looked it looked dark and menacing, although it probably wasn't. It was just it, it just looked, it was just fantastic. Probably one of the best scrying I've ever seen um, in such a short moment. So it was just it was good. Yeah, really, really good. Do you think that could be because um, it was somebody that is new to paranormal investigating and somebody that never done scrying before? Uh, yeah, and I think um, I think quite possibly it's right because they won't have any expectation. They have no expectation of what to expect. You know, they've never seen it before. They don't know what they're doing, uh, and that's why I think we got f- three brilliant results. Well, we, we we did get three brilliant results. One lady was a bit more uh, experienced. She does does it at home, um, and even then, when she done it, it that looked really weird. <laughs> it looked like a decomposing body at point at some point. So sounds delightful. Oh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like yeah. me. Well, I look so like, I like in the you, morning. The second one I I filmed that's on our page as well, and that's one that was on about. Uh, but I don't like saying this, but she did look demonic. She really did. Her, her eyes went yellow, like Nick was saying. Her eyes went yellow. Yeah, her eyes went yellow. Like she had another eye, a third eye. But yeah. it, it, was, it was really red in the middle of her face is really red between between the eyes and it was it was quite looked quite menacing that one did it it is i don't think i don't think i would have liked to meet it in a dark alley anywhere <laughs> it, it was really it was really it was really menacing and horrible so i think i think with scrying also if you if you're if they if you're kind of comfortable with the people that are doing it you can actually get them to do some channeling while they're doing it as well so you just get them to think of the first thing that they've been that, that comes into mind and they offload it and it, it basically turns out to be that person talking out or giving information we didn't quite go there on the saturday night but i think when we if we if and when we return it would be worth doing because if we can pull those those characters back that would be further evidence that we, we you know we could try and find out or just get confirmed by the people that know more about the place oh, so, you just touched on something um there nick actually that I, is worth a discussion um yep. so you said um expectations yep do you not think both of you actually do you not think that people do come on ghost hunts with an expectation they come expecting something to happen or to see something massively yes i, t- I totally agree with that i mean they expect they sometimes i think they, they, they go and then when they don't get nothing they get disappointed and then then they go well didn't get nothing and I'm not going again, but every every place, every different place is different. You know, you're not going to get spirits every single night that are going to want to communicate with you. Yeah. You know, and if, if as, you're not, a, as, if, as a living being, I can quite openly and honestly say I have days where I don't want to communicate with anybody. That's, that's correct. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, no. And Why just, should it be any different? Because and, people uh, are not living. Well, they're, they're still an intelligent energy. They can still have free will to come forward or not. You know, they can go to the pub down the road if they want to. So it's... I need to check in me. So, but yeah, I think I think people do come with um, really great expectations of what's going to happen on that night or, you know, the, the scare, the scare fear factor of it all and it's they get disappointed. But yeah. for those people that come with the scare factor, the terror the expectations do you not think that can sometimes add to any activity that is happening because you're going in you're taking this energy in with you so you're you're taking your energy into a building that is full of expectation fear anxiety um, excitement do you not think that can have a bearing on the activity that you receive i think it can work both ways it can yes, it can do because it it will enhance the energy that's in the room, or actually it will just go well. Actually, you know the, the energy will go. You're being a bit too boisterous. We're not going to do anything with you today. So, and it's also those people that come forward. That I'm not saying I, I like it when skeptics come on on the team or, or on the investigations, uh, but you know you I heard someone say that earlier in the show that 
whatever you put in, you're going to get back. You know, and if you're just going to sit there and twiddle your thumbs or be on your mobile phones, don't bother. You know, don't just don't bother coming if you're that sort of person. You know, you've got to interact. Now, we had two ladies on Saturday night that have never ever been to an investigation. Um, and they were jumping for joy. They they were they wanted to be involved in anything that we could do, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be equipment or doing the scrying, table tipping, mm-hmm. human pendulum, you know, all all these ex- experiments that we do. It was it was just so good to see because a they had no expectation, they were excited, which raised the vibration, you know, and they were willing just to do whatever it takes to get something. It doesn't matter how big or small, just to get something, some bit of evidence. And I think I think they really enjoyed it, from what I've heard anyway. So we've you see, we we all I think I'm probably right in saying, and I'm sure that ninety nine point nine nine blah blah blah. If I try that one again, ninety nine point nine percent of paranormal investigators um, that have been doing this for some time and that do host public events will probably agree with with when I say that we don't often get that feeling anymore because we're all so focused on making sure that everything's running smoothly and that mm-hmm. the guests are enjoying themselves and everything's explained properly to the guests that we don't necessarily get that enjoyment factor out of the night. So on the odd occasion, like when I get to come with you guys, I am just a guest. I am just a person. Yeah. And, and I mean, Dave and any host of the night says is that anybody that's never done an investigation before, I am one of those really annoying people that go, me. <laughs> <laughs> I am one of those really annoying people because then I am starting the whole night like it's my very first ever investigation. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get such a buzz from any little bit of activity that you get because yeah. – because that that it's that passion it, it brings it back to you so much and and I think it's so easy to overlook that yeah I, I think I've been in the medium as well it's oh here he goes rubbing it in look just because he gets the enjoyment every day no no I wasn't gonna say anything about that <laughs> it's yeah, for, I mean for like the the, the, sat, the Saturday night or sorry the Friday night um you know we're so involved in making as we say making sure the public are safe the experiments are running as they should be the spirit are coming forward we didn't get to sit back and go, what was that noise? Or, you know, let's have a look at that bit of equipment. And actually there was, there was a couple walking around. They, they weren't really part of any, any of the groups that we had because I realised that they were just going around following or taking themselves off and taking photographs. So I just went up to him and said, would you do me the kindest honour and just, just use my camera? Just take some photographs for me. I'd love to see what you can get. And he took some cracking shots on my little digital mm-hmm. camera. So you know, is that so, your digital camera that that because these are these the pictures that we was looking at. Um, well, he, he I, oh. I don't know. I know he had his own one. Right. Um, okay. So and then he, he was using my one as well. So, but you know, unless it's a team event, where that's when a team event we could just we could just let our hair down. You know, we can just sit around for hours in the dark doing nothing and wait. You know, hear that little noise and go and investigate what that noise was or whatever it is. So it's um it it is tiring. It is really tiring. Just to, just to get back on your comment, what was it like for me and doing two nights? It's knackering. So how does it feel when your energy is being zapped like it, it is for a medium? Because me and Dave don't have this this luxury, do we, Dave? So we no. don't know how that feels. It, it's, it doesn't help. I mean, OK, my, my, my Saturday night ended at four o'clock in the morning on, on Sunday. Mo- uh, no, sorry. My Friday night yeah, ended up on four o'clock Sunday morning. No, Saturday morning. I got home, um, I got to bed about four o'clock. Uh, my daughter came in and had a full-blown conversation with my wife at seven o'clock. She got up, turned the TV on. My wife started to tidy up the house. So <laughs> I, I, I ran on about three hours sleep. So, um, so but it, it, it is draining um, to a point where you know, we've got to make sure that we've got enough sugar, you know, enough supplies that are going on in our body to make sure that we can carry on the evening. And there's lots of, lots of different tricks that we can do. Um, we eat I don't know about Gary or Andy, but I eat sugary stuff. That's that's my mechanism. Um, but I also make sure that my friend in spirit is standing next to me to help. And he's like a barrier. He's a warning sign. And it, actually, we, we did an investigation at Penryn Old Hall in, in near Clandudno, where my guy said, Nick, you need to get out. You need to get out. I was like, OK, but I'm not going to run out. I'm just going to walk out at a leisurely pace and tell the spirit that's behind me that's 
wants to do something horrible um, that I'm not afraid and, you know, I, I, I respect. So, but, but yeah, we, it's, it, I, I keep saying the same thing, but it's tiring in lots of aspects because we're looking after the public, we're doing the experiments, we're linking to the spirit, we're making sure that we've got, we're okay, we've got the energy, you know, and also I've got a, a two hour drive or whatever it is on the way home as well. And the team as well, because if you've got team that aren't mediums or sensitives, yep. then I guess as a medium, you're also watching over them just to make sure that they're safe too. Well, yeah, and actually that's a good point, because on Saturday night we were upstairs, um, and I knew we had a particular gentleman that likes to take uh, or has a particular attraction to one of our members of the team, David Shuttle. Um, and during that process, I, I said to Dave, you know, let me know if you're okay. I think they, they've they here to confirm that actually that's what I was doing. Tell me if you're okay. Tell me if you're okay. Because I knew there's there's something between the two of them, that spirit and Dave. So, yes, you, 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 your eyes in the back of the head. Yeah. Gary has completely just agreed with what you were saying, actually, Nick. He said plenty of drinks, lots of water and sweets on breaks. So apparently sugar is the way forward. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> Don't do much for the old waistline, buddy. Yeah, keep you going you missed, for the night. You missed all the cakes on Saturday night, Jeff. Yeah. Well, Gemma cannot have cakes. This body is a temple. <laughs> it looked pretty good to me on the, on the Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> I need them pictures. <laughs> oh you can come I was again thinking that we're gonna get i was thinking it was gonna get through the whole interview without anybody mentioning <laughs> the weekend but obviously not <laughs> yeah so i think saturday night was, was slightly more eventful than the sun than the, the friday i mean for spirit activity it was it was yeah and yeah. like I said, nick, nick, nick came up with with stanley which he matched up with the first name that he couldn't get on our private investigation, and that just blew me away because I never told, I've never told Nick the surname. I, I never research. I, I, that's that's just one of my hates. I hate people that go to places that research it first. I I want the building. I want the spirit. Why do you hate that? Why? Because it kind of makes yeah. a mockery. It's like you, you know you, you go there with pre preconditioned ideas of what what's there or knowledge of what's there. You know I'm. Um, Okay, you know, I need to know the name of the place and the postal code so I know where I'm going. But I, I want the building to tell me. I want the spirit that resides there or visit there to tell me their history or what the building was for or how it was used and that sort of thing. And that doing that, you get a lot more. Because if you, I've, I think if you research the history, then you, you already have an understanding, and you're just you're just only going to tread on those levels. You're not going to be able to dig deeper into the into the levels that are, are not there. So there's far more to a building than, than a history book. I agree to a certain extent. I'm with you. Um, you know, the way I see not just haunted locations, but any locations, because whether or not something is reported to be haunted has no relevance because let's face it, everywhere has the potential to be haunted. Absolutely. So I look at it as like an onion skin. Yeah. yeah. So you could just yeah. keep peeling off layers and layers and layers and layers. Do I think that history is important? Yes. Yeah, I do. To a certain extent. But I will not research where before going in because I well, I know what my head is like and I know that that would give me preconceived ideas. So I would be like I'm trying to think I, th of I think I think, I, I think for me is that if I went to a public location to a, a, yeah, a public event at a location and I came out with loads of stuff that could be easily readable on Google or the whatever leaflets you can get at the places that that kind of would like shine a, a, a negative light on me yeah but see this is where it's slightly different because for me and Dave we'll go gather knowledge and then research yeah. afterwards see if we can find some form of of history relating to what we've got whereas for you because you're a medium yeah if you're coming out with anything that could be find found on wikipedia then you're looking like i'm, I'm not saying you are like this nick because i know you're not but <laughs> it can be seen that you are a wikipedia medium right i'm with you I totally yeah. get where you're yeah. coming from with that yeah and that's that's not what who that's not what i do that's not who i am and actually if i start going down that road spirit will just walk away from me 
So I've also always got to be truthful, A, to them and to you and to the public. And to yeah. you. So, that, yeah, that's absolutely. Why, that, yeah, that's why it's either me that looks up something about the location and I don't give it to Nick or Andy until halfway through the night when they've got that bit of evidence. And I can turn around on camera and say, yeah, you're correct there. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we have Faye that's our historian now as well. So she she looks up things as well, and she doesn't say anything until I bring her in to confirm something. You know, so I can totally, you know, give you 100% guarantee that Nick and Andy don't look up any any history whatsoever. No, do you know what? There's, there's occasions where Dave turned around to me and goes, oh, can I just tell you then? Can I just tell you? I'm like, no, because I haven't got all, <laughs> all the information yet. Tell me later. So let me tell but you Dave's first. excited and he wants to share Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. I know. <laughs> When, when Nick gets it, it it's great because even when the public's there, I can turn around to Nick because I treat it when the public there like a, like our private investigation. Sometimes I'll ask Nick questions through the night because we first start off as a paranormal investigation, mm-hmm. and then we start doing things later like the scrying and the table tipping uh, and the Ouija board and human pendulum later on in the night. So we'll do it. We treat it as a paranormal investigation first, and then I can ask Nick questions. What he's picking up, and I can clarify then in front of public that he's got it right, you know. And I think that's gives the public a bit more. Yeah, he's right. You know, they've not made it up. Because I turn around to Nick and say, Nick, can I just tell you? Can I just clarify that with you? And Nick will say yes or no. Let me get a bit more information before you know. And it's, I find it really, really good when you know you can give him that information later that it's correct. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, I like that. I like that aspect. I like to be surprised at the end of a night when everything, like on Friday night, everything was all tying in. I like that. Yeah. And I really like that. That that makes you feel the buzz, the buzz for what we all do. Yeah. And that's so, why we do it. That's why we do it. It's not just for public investigations. We do it for private investors. That's why we like doing it, to get this evidence and to get proof. You know, that there is stuff. No, there is spirits. There is, there is, you can get the history. I'm just going to throw this one out there. And I, you know, I absolutely love ghost hunting. I will always love it. What got me into the paranormal field in the first place? But, and this is probably going to go down like a... (laughs) Chimney from a roof. But what does all these flashy lights on K2s and easy eyes and, and no disrespect, you know I, I love you, the bones of you, Nick, but a mediums, what, what does all this prove in terms of spirits actually being real? Because still scientifically, we have no proof, which is frustrating because we all go out, we all see things, hear things, feel things. But yet, how can we prove it to others? It, you're not going to be able to oh, prove it. Oh, good question, that one, no, isn't it? Is, it is, <laughs> it is, it's not an awkward question, but it's a difficult Sorry. one to answer. Because in the scientific world, you can't you can't prove something unless you can see it. And that's exactly. the issue. Or have the data so, analysis to prove it. Absolutely. And, and we don't have that. And well, the, only, the only reason why we haven't got that is because we haven't got anybody on the other side of life that can come forward into the physical and you know, be a part of us in a physical manner, you know, and say, this is actually the data that you need. Like so, time travel. Yeah, like time travel. Time yeah, travel. yeah, like time travel. I mean, I mean, really, it, it can be a bit of a case where it's just a bit of gimmicky where we're asking spirit to go and light up or flash up the K2. I don't particularly like the K2s because they can be interfered with by lots of different things. But it's, you know, it's, it's there. You know, there's lots of equipment now that is so vast to say that actually that that can't be interaction from spirit or the energy of spirit it's got to be it's whether or not the scientific world will okay you have dog towels wagging somewhere um, it's, 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 um, it's where it, you know, it's like it's whether or not the scientific world will actually just put their hands up and go do you know what actually you've got something you actually have got something you know but we've, we've got things like evps how can you explain evps they are voice phenomena 
well, yeah. I have written a blog on that if you'd like to read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's yeah, you know, it, it's uh, I, I'm I'm always one for the EVP. I love them. I I will listen all day to EVPs because they fascinate me. So, but also we get photographic evidence. I I think it's very rare that you're going to find. I was going to shoot myself in the foot here, but I think it's very rare where you're going to find a ghost walking on a camera. I think it's no, I think please. it's. Yeah, I'm with you. If I that was going to happen, surely it would have happened by now, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We might get glimpses of something that could be misconstrued to be a ghost, but really, it's just so hard, isn't it? Because I, you, you, you will, or well, everybody listening will, will get asked the same question all the time. Why do you do it when there is no proof? And the only answer I can ever give well, is because a, we- I want to find the proof. I want to be able to add my part into the paranormal field to say, well, actually, I did this. I researched that. I did whatever I could to add to the ever expanding folder of information and data that could yeah. then hopefully one day be proven. Yeah. That's what we well, that's what we strive for every time we go out, isn't it? We, that's what we keep. That's what keeps us going. And sugar. <laughs> and sugar. Yeah. 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 That, that's that's the buzz, though. It's it's to go out on an investigation, to go to a location, and try your utmost to get that evidence. Until science scientists turn around and say, "Yeah, we believe that there is life after death," and we you can see spirits. We're always going to keep doing it. Yeah. I mean, I would probably keep doing it regardless. I love it. Yeah. I love the rabbit holes that this whole paranormal field takes you down. I love the fact that every day, and especially just lately, and this is massively thanks to Kerry Greenaway and Ashley Nibb, that the fact that they they um, they push me, if you like, to come out of my comfort zone and to look at different areas and, and to go down these rabbit holes that, that you just see no way out of. But without people encouraging you to to push your own knowledge yeah then you're not really going to improve so no and i know that you guys do that to each other as well you two push each other all the time i mean you could call it dave winding nick up (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah but you know i mean we're we're all there for the same thing aren't we all it doesn't matter we're all there to enjoy the evening try and capture something yeah, and, and have a good laugh at the end of the day. So on a serious note, you know, on a serious level. Yeah. Can I just can I just say that that for the people that are listening, all that noise is nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's, it makes a change. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dave's fault this time, everybody. It's Dave's fault. I'm yeah, sitting here very quietly because my animals oh. didn't try breaking in when we first started the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, you're on, that, when you're on the radio. They do, yeah. It's like my my children. Like I cannot speak to them all day. The minute I go live, they'll they'll be like, "Mom, mom, go away." It's good job <laughs> people at home can't actually see what we look like. The amount of times I sit here and I'm like, "No, go away, go away." <laughs> was the uh, going back to Frank Knight, your, your son picked up quite a lot as well. He did. He did. My yeah, he done well. Was, uh, He's, he's well. very sensitive. Um, makes it a proud mummy moment. <laughs> <laughs> the next generation of paranormal investigations investigators is in process. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Bless him. We need, to, we need to keep it going. Oh, definitely. But I think this is one thing that will never fade out. I think that there will always be more people that come along that are interested in the paranormal and want to know the ifs, buts, whens, yeah. Yeah. hows. Yeah. I, I do want to say one thing, though, just for the listeners as well. It doesn't, doesn't oh, matter. Dear. If, oh, dear. Be- <gasps> this is Nick. Should we yeah. let you live? Okay. I'll talk to you later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, do you know, it, yes. Yeah, me and Andy, uh, Gary, we're the mediums, but we're we're probably the first people when we hear something to go and try and debunk debunk something. Yeah, yeah. Not not everything's paranormal, and we know that. You know, so just because we're hearing a noise or we see something walking by, it doesn't necessarily mean it's paranormal. So we've got to go and look. Yeah, I was, again, that, that's I was, the whole. 
I was up and down the stairs like a jack in a box on Saturday night because yeah, no. the prices kept going up and I went upstairs to investigate and then back down and they go off again. <laughs> Your poor legs, Dave. Yeah. Got right work out down yeah. those stairs. It's the, it's the most of all weekend. <laughs> Yo, keep coming, keep walking. Yeah, I mean, I'm short legs. I, I totally, totally agree with what you just said, actually, Nick. And because I've now, I can now say that I've worked with both yourself and Gary. I, I know that you will try and debunk everything before you say, okay, I, I actually have yep. no explanation. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's the only way to be. be. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, we're right out of time. Did, yeah. did they tell you about the man, the guy, one of the guys on Saturday that I forgot that I put under the stairs? I forgot all about him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I said, yeah. I said I, I be, you could be in there for five minutes. I think it was like 25 minutes later. I, I remember that he was in there. Definitely true what they say. You never quite know what you're going to get on the go with some. Am I right? Yeah. Or, or where you get stabbed or pants, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, guys, we are right out of time. Thank you so so much for joining Pleasure. me tonight. It's been an absolute honor to chat to you both. Oh, likewise, thank you for the invite. You're very yeah. welcome. And for everybody listening, don't forget there is shows on pretty much every night of the week. If you miss a show, head on over to Spreaker or YouTube where you can catch up. And don't forget, as Kerry would say, don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. I've been Gemma, and for tonight, thank you so much for joining me, and thank you, everybody, in the chat room. It's been amazing. Until next week, goodbye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.